Hey guys, welcome back to Triple O Rustic Designs. In this video, we're going to be making our beautiful farmhouse table for our new home. We're super happy with how it turned out, so check it out. So we're going to start off this video at our local Lowe's Home Improvement Store. The first thing we're going to do is go look for some 2 by 10 by 8 feet long boards. Now since we're going to be using these boards for our dining room table, we're going to carefully check them for any warping as well as any damage to the boards. We need to find the best boards possible so we can get a really nice finish on the table. And I know what some of you guys are saying, like, why are you guys buying boards when you have a sawmill and you can just make boards? Well, most of the boards that we've already cut on our sawmill are not dry enough yet to be made into a table. And we're really trying to get this table done before Thanksgiving. Now that we have our boards picked out, we're going to take them back to our DeWalt table saw and we're going to rip straight edges on the sides of the boards. By doing this, we'll be able to joint the boards together and not have any cracks in our dining room table. Once that's done, we're gonna take our boards over to our planer and we're gonna run them through trying to get the boards flat on both sides. We're still going to sand all the boards in the entire tabletop when it's all put together, but running them through the planer really helps get that started. Now that all the boards are flattened, we've got them clamped together and we're marking all the locations that we're going to put pocket holes. As you can see, we're putting pocket holes on both sides of these joints. Zoe's going to go ahead and use our Craig jig to drill the pocket holes in all the marked locations on the boards. If you don't have a Craig jig, I would highly recommend picking one up. You can get them from Amazon. I think right now they're on sale for like $70 to $80. We decided to go with pocket holes instead of just like a normal glue up because the pocket holes, when we put them all together and put the screws in it, it's going to bring those joints together nice and tight. And it's also going to help the table be extremely sturdy. I know most people would use like dominoes or some kind of biscuits, but we are going to use these pocket holes on this table build and see how it turns out. All of our pocket holes are done and we are now going to lay out all the boards and see what the best configuration is to have the flattest table. As you can imagine, all boards aren't created equal. So once we figured out which order we want them to go in, we actually are going to flip the boards over and work the pocket holes from the underside. By doing this, one of us will be able to monitor the top of the table and make sure it's completely flat and flush. We don't really care if the underside of the table isn't level because we're not gonna be able to see it. But by making sure the top part is completely flat all the way across, it's gonna make the table look a lot nicer in the end and it's also gonna help us for sanding. Once we sand the entire thing, you will barely be even to tell that there's joints in this tabletop. We'd like to hear your opinion though. Would you have put this table together this way or would you have rather used some glue and maybe like some dominoes or the biscuits? Drop your comment below what you would have done for this table build. Now that the table's all screwed together, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use my Festool TS-75 track saw and I'm gonna cut some straight edges on both of the ends of the table. For the table base, we knew we wanted some kind of cool looking farmhouse design. So we got on Pinterest and we searched farmhouse dining room table. What we came back with was actually a lot of really good ideas. We found a table base that had some cross members and we just knew that that was the one for us. So we got to work measuring some distances, some angles, and we got it all put together. We built the entire table base out of two by six by eight foot long boards and we used our table saw to cut the angles. Being that I'm not a master carpenter and I'm not very good with the angles, we used the scribing method to create the, the cross members. So by doing that, we just held a board up to the back of the table base and we drew the angle 
that needed to be cut on the board and then we just made our cuts on the table saw. Once the table base was complete, we completely sanded it to 120 grit. That's the highest we needed to go since no one's really going to be touching the table base. And then we got it prepped for stain. For the stain, we knew we wanted like a dark brown slash red color. So we ended up using Minwax's honey and espresso colors. We mixed both of them together and we really liked the color that came out of it. We used scotch pads and just worked our way around the entire table base. I used a paintbrush to get down in those hard to reach areas like the pocket holes and the cracks. Once we got all the stain applied everywhere on the base, I went back over with a rag and wiped off any excess. So we put the table base off to the side to dry and now we're gonna sand the underside of the table to 220 grit. You're gonna see the table change color there for a second and that's because we water popped the grain and then re-sanded it again. So we got our mixture of honey and espresso stains mixed together and we begin staining the underside of the table. We used a scotch pad and we just worked our way around the table and then I took a rag and wiped off the excess. If you were to do the same project, what brand of stain would you use and like what method would you use to apply it? Go ahead and drop your opinion in the comment box below of what you would have done to do this same project. So we flipped our table over and we begin sanding it all the way up to 800 grit. I know we probably didn't need to go that fine on the tabletop, but being that it's going to be at our dinner table, I wanted it to be as smooth as possible. Once the tabletop was completely sanded, we got our mixture of stain and we began staining it. We noticed that because we sanded it all the way up to 800 grit, the stain was a lot lighter than what it looked like on the bottom of the table. Once the table was completely dry, we set it off to the side and got it ready to poly it. So we used a water-based brush on poly and we ended up applying four coats. Between each coat, we sanded it lightly and then got rid of all the dust before applying the next coat. This was my first time using poly and I was a little scared at first, but it actually turned out really nice in the end. So we let the table dry for 72 hours and then we went ahead and got it loaded into my truck to move down to our new house. The overall completed dimensions of the table ended up being eight feet long by 36 inches wide and 30 inches tall. We wanted a table big enough to be able to have the entire family over for dinner and everybody can sit together and have a good time. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. It really helps us out. And don't forget to subscribe for future videos. See you next time.